And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jan and Christoph on stage to inaugurate further the launch of this plant. Imagine, imagine today is the 8th of September 2031 and we are here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the ORCA plant, the largest direct air capture plant and storage plant in the world today. Imagine Today, we are not capturing 4,000 tons, but we are capturing many millions of tons of CO2 from the air and safely storing it underground. And by doing so, we have still made it on the path that the just latest IPCC report has recommended us to urgently move on to. And imagine that ORCA is not alone. It is one of many plants, larger plants at many sites, around the world, on this planet, being part of an entire ecosystem, an entire industry of customers, of a supplier network, and also of a system of worldwide policies that are urgently required to scale this up to a climate-relevant size. Well, now this is why we are here today in 2021, to start, to start this development to start this development with the ORCA plant that can capture 4,000 tons of CO2 from the air every year to hand it over to our friends from Carbfix to then store it on the ground and turn it into the earth forever. Well, this development that I just sketched out over the next 10 years that will be enabled by ORCA, but it will also be enabled by you. And this is why at this point, I would like in the name of Christoph and myself, send you a very warm welcome here in Iceland and a sincere thank you for joining us here today for this very important moment. In particular, I would like to thank Prime Minister Katrin Jakobsdottir, former President Oliver Grimson and Mayor Dagor Egertsen for joining us here and, and helping us with this event. I would like to thank our customers, our pioneering customers from the private sector, corporates that have helped us kick off the planning of ORCA at all. I would like to thank our investors and shareholders, some of them are here today, and also all of our partners that have helped us on the path here. In particular, I want to name two. I would like to thank the team of Carbfix for, well, being the partner who's turning the CO2 into stone, and we'll learn quite a bit more from Etta later here. And I would like to thank the team of OnPower, first of all, for hosting us here in this environment, which is really nice, but even more importantly, for supplying Orca with renewable energy. And last but not least, I would like to thank our team. I would like to thank all the climb workers. And for all the others here, there are 40 of those here in the room today, and I can highly recommend, if you have a chance, try and find one climb worker and ask him just, how was it? How did this all come up? You will recognize them by a glowing in their eyes and a lot of excitement. I'm sure you'll find them. And quite a few of them have spent, over the past year, many, many months over there on the construction side, and those of you living in this country know that it's not always like today. Like I've, we've heard rumors about horizontal wind and a lot of rain and tough conditions, but they've made it and they've turned Orca into a reality. On a personal note, for me today really is one of these very, very few moments that you live for, breathe for, and that you're dreaming of. And if I look back at the two of us, we started this around 12 years ago, and we had big dreams at that point in time. We didn't have a lot at our hands, though. We were working at 
the Swiss Technical University, ETH Zurich. We had a small prototype in the lab, like a small bucket like this, and that was capturing a few milligrams of CO2 out of the ground, uh, out of the air. Well, but we had the dream of turning this into a large industrial facility, and now today we are standing here, and we'll later be standing directly in front of hundreds of tons of concrete and steel doing this, actually. Well, now, 12 years later, we have a lot of more dreams of scaling this onto a climate-relevant scale, and let's say we have another 12 years to work on them. Well, coming back from dreams into the reality, I have the feeling that this year could turn into a turning point how climate change is perceived on a global basis. And I'm quite convinced that a few years down the road, if we look back, this plant over there could become a turning point on how we fight climate change. For us at Climeworks, it's been already quite influential. It has been some, there has been some internal turning points, if you like, if we, if we look what we've built there. And let me just mark three aspects. For those of you who saw pictures of our previous plants, they will realize that what you see over there is an entire new technology generation. Just to name two numbers, we have made it to reduce the required amount of materials, of steel and other metals, to build these CO2 collectors by a factor of half per output capacity. And also as of today, we have an independent third-party study that confirms that the, the gray emissions that are produced by this plant are only at the order of about 10%. That means when Orca takes a ton of CO2 out of the air and we then store it on the ground, then only 100 kilograms are re-emitted due to the production of the plant, its operation, and its eventual dismantling. And with Orca being live and in operation today, we have something else very special. We have a carbon dioxide removal solution in place, which is, in terms of the area that we require, about a thousand times more efficient than trees. To put this in a number, the Orca plant sits on an area of around 2,000 square meters. To capture the same amount of CO2 out of the air, we would need to plant trees on about 2 million cubic meters. So we should plant a lot of them, but it might not be sufficient, and that's why Orca can help. And lastly, this plant is on its way to be the worldwide first independent third-party certified carbon dioxide removal solution based on direct air capture. We have already received independent validation of the process, everything that's around the plant, by the Norwegian company DNV in summer this year and then the formal certification will follow after the first phase of operation. Well, now today, for us, I would say that is only the beginning. We have a first product for direct air capture-based carbon removal from the atmosphere on the market. But what might be even more important than that is everything that we will learn from Orca in the next couple of years, because those are the vital ingredients. When we put plans out there, we learn, we make mistakes, and we take all this knowledge in order to then scale up what we're doing to megaton scale and eventually to gigaton scale. So with this. So let's pause for a moment and reflect why it is so important and so relevant to launch Orca today. Orca creates two new realities. On the one hand, Orca catalyzes the creation of a much needed carbon dioxide removal market. Note that the plant back there is the backbone to the globally spearheading carbon dioxide removal agreements that we're having with our corporate partners, as well as with more than 8,000 people committed to our service. Today, it might feel new to us to put money on the table for a service to remove CO2 from the air 
and provide it for permanent underground storage. However, we must not forget that in 30 years down the road, this can be one of the largest industries on the planet. The second reality that Orca is creating is on the infrastructure and technology side. It is the largest direct air capture and storage plant. To put that in a tangible way, Jan gave the example with trees. I'm giving a comparison to electric cars. This plant is taking the unavoidable carbon footprint of 10 to 20,000 electric cars from the road. That's 5% of Tesla's production last year, so that's quite remarkable. Now, we welcome you to join us to visit the plant later this morning, and same, when you will look at the plant, the image of the plant will be new to you. But in the future, we will be seeing thousands of those plants, and this is exactly what we need in order to reverse climate change. Now, Jan was alluding that <clears throat> considering things that are currently happening around us, this year might be a turning point in climate change. And Orca can contribute its share to it. And I'd like to share with you how. Note that every molecule of CO2 that Orca is taking out of the air and providing for permanent underground storage will not contribute to global warming in the years to come. This is globally unique, a unique ability. As much as it is unique, it is needed to scale that massively. And for scaling of technological carbon dioxide removal solutions, the Orca facility is the most advanced and secure platform we currently have. Look at the infrastructure we're having here. We are operating it day and night every day. From that, we're learning. From those learning, we're optimizing. And with those optimizations, we can build improved and scaled up plants in the future. There's a saying, you're learning by practice, not by planning. Sometimes humans optimize for the finish line, and eventually, they forget to start. Orca is the exact opposite. Orca is all about starting now and not optimizing for the finish line. With that, we get momentum going. And that momentum, in combination with a very, very concrete scale-up roadmap that we're having, makes us confident that in the second half of this decade, we will crack megaton capacity. Other successful modular climate technologies, mentioning solar PV or wind, have shown growth rates of 20 to 25% year on year. Now, if we, if we use the megaton launchpad in the second half of this decade and assume growth rates that have been shown for other modular technologies, this will bring us to gigaton removal by 2050. And this is precisely what climate science asks us to do. This is precisely the scale that we need in order to achieve climate targets. Well, today is also a call for action to policymakers. We must not forget that so far, successful climate technologies were profiting from very powerful subsidies. To name a few, in the 2000s, solar PV received feed-in tariffs. Most people don't know those feed-in tariffs in the early days were in the range of $500 per ton of CO2 and volumes of several billions annually spent for that. We are seeing the exact same today with battery electric vehicles. In some countries and states of this planet, for example, Germany is paying 9,000 euro per electric vehicle as a subsidy. California is paying $9,700 per electric vehicle. If you calculate that down per ton of CO2 avoided, it is again $500 per ton of CO2, and the volume is billions. We need precisely those mechanisms to scale our industry in a sustainable and robust way. We're confident that with a network of investors, corporate partners, and people we bring at Climeworks, we can achieve the Megaton launchpad, but we are also convinced that thereafter, we need policy and the public domain to kick in. And this is why we need all of you. We need you to convey this message to decision makers and policy makers. And with that, I'm inviting you to enjoy this day, to celebrate it with us. And although COVID is still with us, 
I'd like to motivate you to be open and embrace random encounters. Your biggest business opportunity might be sitting next to you. And with that, I'd like to send some special thanks to people who were really the trigger point to making this plant happening. It went back to precisely a random encounter five years ago at COP22 in Marrakesh, where I randomly met Julio Friedman. Thank you, Julio, for meeting you. Thank you, Julio, for opening doors to the so far biggest party I've ever been, the Doofest by Lorraine Kalchop, where I met the former president of Iceland, President Grimson. Thank you for listening to me, and thank you for opening doors to Iceland and making the links. And then thank you to Edda and Bergo for being open to our, I remember at that time, quite crazy idea and making this happen. Thank you so much.